Hey guys, what's up? Ian here from Mid America Prep. Thanks for tuning in and watching. So the last update video I did on the adventure trailer here, um, I answered some questions towards the end of the video. Now, some of the questions I've been receiving are what would I do different and how would I do certain steps? Um, and actually, those two coincide together. Uh, one of the questions was how did I seal the wood? Well, um, I actually just took the wood and I just took fiberglass resin and then I let it dry and then I I painted over it once it was you know, on the trailer and everything. I, tried, I painted everything together. Um, now how would I have changed that? Well, actually I had huge intentions in the very beginning to take and get fiberglass cloth, do every single sheet, and then cut my parts out. But my problem was the expense that comes with fiberglass uh, cloth. They have um, woven and shredded fiberglass cloth that's commercially available or you know consumer available it comes in about a 32 by 46 inch um, sheet for the woven and a little bit smaller for the shredded and it's great for small projects and everything but the problem is I have five sheets of plywood on here that were four by eight sheets and that's a lot of fiberglass cloth I actually had a connection to where I can get fiberglass cloth for a fairly cheap price um, that was a six foot roll that was around 50 foot long. Um, it was going to cost me around $75 to $100 for that entire um, setup, but I could only get so much because the, the cost that it would take to, to purchase it. Um, I also had the chance to purchase a 6 foot by 25 foot roll of Kevlar, as they do use in Kevlar vests and stuff. Um, it's similar to the uh, woven uh, fiberglass cloth, but it was Kevlar. And basically, I, I wanted to use it for rigidity, not for you know bulletproofing it or anything, just for the strength that Kevlar uh, gives. But I couldn't get either of those to come through, so I decided just to do a plain resin. Now up here on the transition, on the angle, I did use an uh, eight-inch piece of, or no, a ten-inch piece of uh, woven uh, fiberglass mat, and it comes down to just below my lights, or my light holes, and then up above here. And it also went around the uh, the hood or the vent uh, housing area, basically just for some rigidity around those corners and to seal them off. Now, what I would, what would have done different? My problem here is, had I done that originally, I would have not had to update it last spring or this last spring. Uh, basically, what happened was that last summer when I painted, I, I let it sit through the summer and then. Through the winter and stuff and it kind of started cracking and when it started cracking the paint started kind of falling off and chipping it's a top side paint from Ursoleum. it is made for boats above the waterline uh, so i figured since this is above waterline not submerged constantly it should be fine well what happened was that the paint was kind of pulling off and it was just it was dry but it was just pulling off the uh, fiberglass resin so i sanded on everything i resealed it and then i repainted it um, unbeknownst to me, apparently I didn't get a good enough separation between the layers of paint from the, from the old paint to the new paint, and it actually has started to crack once again. So it's only been about six months since I painted it, and it's going to need a re redo. And so that's actually what I'm doing today. I'm going to try to finish this angled piece correctly. So I have paint stripper on it right now. As you can see, this area right here is still gray. You can see some fiberglass and the red and the wood coming through. But now that paint just comes right off. It just crumbles. And that's what it looks like when it's crumbling, as it would with you know paint stripper. So what I'm gonna do is completely get this clean, keep the bolts in place because it doesn't need to come off. It the wood itself is fine, it's just the finish. I'm going to um, Go purchase two packages of fiberglass cloths because they're 46 inches long which should cover from down here to past my line and then i'm going to sand it down fiberglass everything let it dry appropriately hard consistent sand it again so the fiberglass cloth cannot be seen repaint it with three coats of paint at least and then i do plan on putting like a, a sandy texture on it like a, a gritty texture on it um, basically, basically to um, remove the shine of the paint. I can't really dull the paint up by sanding it, 
Uh, the problem is that this paint reflects a lot of light and it shines right into the back of the Jeep when I'm driving down the road in the mirrors. And so I don't want it to be dull and I want it to be, you know, kind of rock and other resistance. So I'm going to do this now. And I actually did have plans, and I do still have plans, to put a 9 by 32 window right here. Um, it's not going to be right now. It just has to be right now, and I can always put it in after I do all this work. So we're going to go ahead. I'm not going to do a step-by-step -step video, but I will come back when I have this paint and uh, removed and sanded down completely. And we'll see what it looks like, and we'll see what it looks like when I get the fiberglass cloth on it. So. All right, guys. So as you can see, the front of the trailer is now finished. Uh, basically, what I did was I, I sanded it all right, took paint stripper, stripped all the paint off down to the uh, fiberglass resin as good as it could be, sanded it, and then um, after I sanded it, I got it cleaned up and then took a layer of fiberglass cloth, woven cloth, and then fiberglass resin, did a layer of that, let it dry, um, and apparently during that time I put too much um, hardener in it and it hardened too quick and gelled up because of the heat and as you can see right in this area right here There's a little bit of a, a weird shape and then right here. There's another weird shape um, Basically just like gelled up and hardened right there and I couldn't sand it down any so Kind of sinks and then you can kind of see this center line that goes all the way up. That is the line between the two sheets of fiberglass cloth that I had to lay down there and trying to meet those up but apparently I couldn't get it sanded down either so anyways I took a pair or a layer of paint followed by a layer of paint that was mixed with a sandy um, texturing that they use for non-skid which you can see that there the main reason why I did that was to not to, to have non-skid surface because it is at an angle and it's only four foot you know or you know six foot off the ground or five foot off the ground roughly uh, but basically to kind of deflect some of the light and so it's not so shiny in my rear view mirror and then of course a third coat of paint so in all um, there was two layers or two coats of resin with fiberglass cloth and three coats of paint so it is good to go I'm gonna get my lights re um, inserted up top and then rewired tonight and so I can go out and take it tomorrow I'm gonna go uh, get some kayaks and have some fun so anyways that's the end of this video. Keep coming, carrying on. You guys stay safe. See you later.